Okay. So in addition to equations and reactions that are written out with formulas, someone could actually describe what a reaction is and based on the names that they use and some of the clues and how they describe the reaction, you could actually figure out what the reaction is a lot of the time. Or at least you'd, you'd have some good clues and be able to eliminate things that don't make sense or inconsistent with what is said. So if someone says the following, would you be able to write a balanced chemical reaction from it? Solid potassium reacts with water to form hydrogen gas and potassium hydroxide dissolved in solution. So the first thing you should do when you see this is try to figure out what all those compounds are. Like figure out if you can come up with a molecular formula for each of those things or a uh, empirical formula for any of the salts that are in that. Okay. So we can actually write out what some of these formulas are that correspond to the compounds or the molecules that were discussed in this problem. So solid potassium, yeah, so you could write potassium which is K, you could write the state symbol for it as solid. So that's how you'd write that. And water is H2O. You should probably know that just off the top of your head. And it, it reacts with water, so that means that there's an arrow there, to form, now we're going to do the products, hydrogen gas and potassium hydroxide. Hydrogen gas, hydrogen is one of those diatomic gases, so it's H2. State symbol is G for gas. And potassium hydroxide, KOH. Hydroxide is OH minus, so it takes one potassium to balance the OH minus potassium is in that first column of the periodic table, so it has a plus one charge. So plus one, minus one from the OH, so KOH is fine. That's a balanced empirical formula. It's neutral, so we, we did this correctly. So based on this, we can actually keep going and balance this reaction. And we would do this. Okay, so to balance this, we just have to make sure that all the elements have the same amount of each in the products and in the reactants. So if I look at this, the potassiums, H's, and oxygens have to be balanced. And if they're not, then we have to fix the coefficients. So let's check this out and make sure that everything's working out. So uh, in the reactants, I have one potassium, right? Because there's just one from potassium solid. I have two hydrogens and I have one oxygen. In the products, I have three hydrogens, one potassium, and one oxygen. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm not just going nuts on this? All right. So um, clearly, the H's are not balanced. All right. So what I could do is, since there's not enough hydrogens in the reactants, is I could add a 2 in front of this and hope that that somehow helps me balance it out. So let's try that. If I added 2 in front of this H2O, then I get 4 H's and two oxygens. And for this side to balance, I'm going to need more oxygens, right? So I will put a 2 in front of KOH, and hopefully that will balance it. So that gives me two oxygens. That gives me two potassiums. And that gives me two hydrogens over here, plus this two, actually, sorry, kind of almost skipped a serious part here. So there's like two hydrogens from H2, and then there's going to be two hydrogens from this 2KOH. So that's four total. So as of right now, the oxygens are balanced, the hydrogens are balanced, but the potassiums are not. And that's easy to fix. I just put a two in front of the potassium and that will only change the number of potassiums. So let's recap this really quickly, and you'll see the strategy I used that's pretty foolproof, or at least me-proof. And what I started with is I said, okay, uh, let's just write down what we have, and let's see what's not balanced. And it looked like the oxygens, sorry, the hydrogens were not balanced. So what I did is I increased hydrogens on the side that was deficient in them, and 
from there, I recalculated how many of, of each of the elements I had. And then I looked in the products and I said, OK, I need more oxygens and I need more um, hydrogens as well. I'm not going to change the H2 because changing the H2 just changes H2. It's kind of a small change. I want to make big changes first. So changing KOH would have changed both the oxygen and the hydrogen and the potassium. So that was a great place to start. And as it turns out, just putting that 2 in front of KOH was all I needed to do for the products. And then once the dust settled from that, it was clear that all you needed to change was the potassium. So that was the last thing I had to change. But this would be the balanced chemical equation you get from that reaction that was described initially.